Welcome to this very important interview with artist Lenore Aline. I wish to remind you that the Bicultural Education and Research Program has a mandate of conserving the biodiversity of the local plant resource in Barbados through the platforms of education and research. We have many projects which enable us to do this, but at the heart of all we do is uh, making sure that the interface with our public is one in which we share uh, information that allows them to reconnect with the heritage associated with our plant resource. We have a very special project ongoing with Lenore Aline under our art and biodiversity project. We think it is inevitable that we link the beauty in the resource to this act of conservation. And we thought, what better way to do this than to request the brilliance of Lenore Aline <laughs> to sharpen the focus for that interface for us. And with our discussions, we realized that a vehicle to do that would be a coloring book, but with her artistic expertise, allowing us to have the best way to focus us on that interface in terms of appreciating the textural beauty which often we don't um, capture and the importance of that to our heritage in terms of using the plant resource. So thank you very much for taking the time out of your very busy and exciting um, workload, Lenore. You're welcome, I'm happy to be here with you. I didn't get to see you often, so this is a real, real pleasure for me. So permit me, Lenore, to introduce you to our public by reading from your artist statement to give us an idea of your brilliance. Lenore Abline's collages and illustrations explore metaphorical and physical inversion, often employing tearing, cutting, and layering of abstract, figurative, and floral shapes to interrogate empathetic feminine connections to nature while alluding to emotional disruptions that team just beyond a first or second glance. Influenced by her surroundings as well as imagined landscapes, Lenore creates abstract paintings and drawings on mylar and paper that are the basis of her collages. The lines, colors, and curves of these impermanent abstract first works are the vernacular of her recent work, structuring figurative silhouettes and dictating their final emergence as whole, often lone female depictions while sharing first work DNA across several portraits. Now, I think that there's quite a bit to unpack in that statement. <laughs> it's quite bold, but it has all the flavor and color um, of what I think stimulates you in your work. So could you give us a little bit of more of the philosophy behind what you do? I came to being an artist quite late. I, I admit to being a dual careerist. I am a technology editor here in the United States, but um, I also definitely put as much time into my art practice as I, as I do my, my full-time job. I tell you that because the, the art that I make is, is about connecting um, outside of the craziness that <laughs> exists in, in, the, in the world that we move through uh, every day. Uh, it's a way for me to escape that overwhelming this of that world, especially now that we've been in a pandemic going on almost two years. Um, and in the work that 
it, I think that the work comes out of trauma for me. It's uh, as opposed to depicting the traumas that I started my career on, I chose to go the opposite direction is to create work that actually soothes me. And I think that comes out, but you know, the trauma is still there. Collage is a really beautiful way to destroy things and then mm-hmm. build it back up again. And that's a way of working through uh, hurt or rage or just general uh, depression uh, mm-hmm. to create something is also making is, is such a, a powerful act as well. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you have made something with your own two hands and there's a power, an internal power that comes through that. So that's really the basis of my, of my work. And I'm a woman, I'm a black woman, uh, especially in the United States. It's so, it's so significant to own that identity. Um, and uh, the work just comes out of also wanting to celebrate that aspect of who I am. Fantastic. Thank you so much for giving us uh, a little little more um, of what is motivating you. Um, I love the idea of you considering it soothing, uh, because I will say that I do dabble a bit in artistic expression, uh, because I, I really indeed was torn between science and art. Um, And the work that I do now um, allows me so much to uh, be part of both spaces, um, be part of what's happening in the artistic world, especially in this collaboration with you. And of course, applying my science in terms of the conservation work. Um, What I find really special uh, about your mode of expression is what you described as impermanent um, act of your first works. Mm-hmm. And I think the, the fact that you're willing to create and destroy and then create again speaks volumes. So can mm-hmm. you talk a little bit more about that? I think this is a really instinctive thing, isn't it? I think that's part of my personality, not that I'm a destroyer, <laughs> but I do seek to put things right. Um, the, the, first, the first work, as I call it, is usually an abstract painting uh, of any size on any medium. I specify mylar and paper because those are the two things I have easy access to. It could be on cardboard. It could be on an already printed piece of paper, however it is done. Um, and looking at that and trying to see something new come out of that, I do love this idea that something old can become new again. Mm. It's a very old idea, but... Um, I'm fascinated by it because we're always remaking ourselves. The world is always remaking itself. The pandemic is a, is a, is a destruction, destructive force, isn't it? But it's also brought up all these other things. You know, there's whole parts of the the world that have been regenerated because we're not trampling on it. Mm -hmm. So this idea of taking something that was old and, or not necessarily permanent and pulling it apart, inverting it, turning it upside down, seeing what else it could be. Mm. I, I love that transformative mm-hmm. uh, play that goes on when, when I, in collage specifically. You know that within um, the work that we're doing together, where we are attempting to capture the beauty in our biodiversity. So my question to you is, how do you see the nexus between art and biodiversity as nature's fit? That's such a great question. I mean, it's an old idea for me because the same way that you've come out of science and had that struggle between science and art, Mm -hmm. my first love is writing and literature, Mm -hmm. specifically Black feminist literature out of the Caribbean and the United States. So I grew up reading Alice Walker and Zora Neale Hurston and Polly Marshall. And the connective tissue between all of these authors and so many more that I haven't mentioned is this idea that Black women specifically um, own the earth, (laughs) right? That there is a connection because of all that we've been through that the earth is ours to own if we choose to do so and recognize it. and, uh, you know, I think in reading all that literature, that became a subconscious understanding for me. And that when I started to make work, that is the work I started to make. It was none of it was really like, I'm going to sit down and let me think, like, what, what do I want to do? It was very natural. I was very drawn to the natural world. Um, and 
I mean, my first collages were found collages using National Geographic. You cannot get more natural <laughs> connections than natural, National Geographic. So there's always been that, in, and in my own writing, uh, fiction writing, there is that vocabulary of nature, of blooming, of birthing, of, of the world, of the natural world, being a character in and of itself on whoever you are trying to become. And I think that my work really tries to do that with the introduction of, I know you and I are working on very specific kinds of mm -hmm. um, flowers, but a lot of my work is based in the abstraction of nature. Um, it's just another way of collaging what's there and making something new, but also very recognizable. Yeah. Um, thank you for that. I, I think it is, um, the, the concepts, uh, it's impossible to separate them, um, nature and biodiversity. And mm -hmm. I know there's uh, a lot of uh, philosophical sort of interrogation about whether our first impression, and we're talking about historical, whether that first impression was to convey language or was it to convey a story? And mm -hmm. in the story, language, it became a language, you know, and, and this is how I view art and artistic expression for me, because um, I am biased and I believe it was to convey a story <laughs> and that story in itself became a language. Okay. What do you think about that? I mean, there's, I, I think that's the, the, the best connection that you could, you could <laughs> make, right? Like, we have so many forms of storytelling and I just feel too that the world, the nature has its own narrative, <laughs> you know, it has its own art. It has its, mm -hmm. you know, we as humans are so quick to say that we're the most, we're the best of everything that's ever been, been presented to the universe. <laughs> the universe has a narrative and, um, I, we're all telling stories, even the zebras on the plains of Africa telling their own stories. And uh, it's, it's just who we are. It's just a reflection of who we are as humans and as living beings um, mm -hmm. in the world. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you 100% that nature has its own narrative. And mm -hmm. in our project, we are trying to capture that for others to see. So um, could you elaborate then you know, if it was a challenge or if it was a simple process um, for you to switch your way of thinking in how you produce your personal work um, mm -hmm. to producing the images for the coloring book. It wasn't, I think the biggest change, it wasn't easy. <laughs> I, will, <laughs> I will pretend that it was. Um, but the biggest thing, adjustment I had to make is the abstraction is to not be, a, I, I still got a little bit in there, as you well know, as I, <laughs> when I started submitting some of these, there is, there is some liberties taken with some of the, um, some of the pieces because nature would not bend to my will. So I had to <laughs> figure that out. Um, but the biggest thing was to be so literal. I'm not used to doing that uh, mm -hmm. in my drawings or my paintings. It's, I, I think abstractly all the time. Um, not that I can't think straightforwardly either, but it was a huge adjustment in terms of art production uh, mm -hmm. to, to look at a passion flower and go, I have to draw a passion flower. <laughs> um, let's do that. <laughs> um, and also just in the, the construction of itself, I could have drawn these. I could have drawn these on one big piece of paper mm -hmm. and dropped a little color in them um, and say here, but then they wouldn't, they would look like so many other things we've seen. Mm -hmm. And it was really important to me that when we started working together, that I stay true to who I am, which is someone who cuts things up and put them back together. Even if there are literal things, there was there were ways uh, for each piece that I found that that process was actually really great because you can um, you have a photo of of you know clammy cherry or again passion flower, which is my favorite. Um, and you have it, you know, it's just a flower sitting in nature. But for me, it was, I was able to make the, the leaves go a certain direction. So it's also orchestrating how you saw that. And that's a, a very powerful thing. And 
that's where the joy and the pleasure came for me in, in working mm-hmm. with and we took you into the field. And, and I say that the process really was from field to collage. So mm-hmm. how important was the field aspect of this journey? So this goes back to the, the European kind of um, 18th, 19th century ways of making botanicals, right? It, uh, my personal work comes out of my imagination, but we have to respect what we're doing. And I think you and I came to the conclusion that it was really important to go see these things out in, in their particular environments. We can't sit at home and look at Google and go, hey, this is where this is. Um, and this is the setting for sorrow. This is how sorrow grows. It was really important for me to also just be in the landscape. You know, I can, how would, how would a sorrow uh, uh, fruit look in its environment? Um, and how maybe that's a difficult thing to translate. So what can I bring to the table to help translate that better? Field work is so important. Um, it doesn't always, sh- you, you don't always get to see it in the final work, but it, it is the driving force of the work. And it's also just, I'm mad about as an artist, documenting everything. Mm-hmm. Um, no one can say that we copied anything from anyone because we have images of the things that we created. Um, not to say Google wasn't useful, but um, it's just a way of, of you and I connecting on the project is by meeting up and going on these two or three hour excursions to different areas of Barbados. Um, and that has an impact on me as a person, as an artist, as someone who's working with you. It wasn't just let's do this and you send me some things and we're emailing each other. We were out together. Um, we met people that I didn't know. All that played a role in, one, wanting to continue the project because we were so connected in that way, but also to just to have a document of, it's just more than the coloring book. It's yes. the research. It's uh, me understanding how these things come about. I didn't know, you know, certain things were only indigenous to Barbados. or mm-hmm. And I learned that by being with you outside. And I also learned that my favorite, favorite, favorite vegetable or fruit Okra. I got. I didn't even know <laughs> what it, what it looked like <laughs> to see it on a farm and and see its beautiful flower. So, really long uh, answer to your question, but um, I just feel that the full work was as important as the artistic work for what we were doing and for how good it was going to turn out. Yeah. No. No answers are too long. They know. <laughs> Not for this discussion. And uh, I'm, I'm very happy um, that you were able to give us that perspective um, because in, in actuality, um, that was part of my motivation, you know, um, being immersed in the field of conservation and uh, being aware of the work that would have been done in the 1800s and being aware of the botanical um, documentation and how that was done. Um, also being aware of the period and what that period meant for us as a people. Um, I think that the act of this mm-hmm. is allowing us to reclaim space as well uh, because there currently is a lot of vision being given to the act of decolonizing um, the history around, you know, um, botanical knowledge and, and who are the persons who really um, should be considered um, the stakeholders of that knowledge. And, and um, the stories are emerging that in, in the act of collecting the bot- botanicals, um, uh, most of the time it was the um, people who were forced into labor. Um, and I'm not saying that it's only the domain of our African ancestry, uh, but we know within the Caribbean um, that that was uh, the main source of forced labor and, and that they were the ones who would source the botanicals um, and uh, they, they would not be given um, recognition. Um, so in this act of producing a coloring book, um, using your artistic um, expertise and your method of interpretation, is an opportunity to reclaim some space for those persons. Um, And indeed, when we do have our launch, it is something that I will make um, comment to because it's very important, very important for me, 
Yes. Can I add to what you're saying here? Um, you know, this idea, again, the, the, the Black feminist novelist that I immersed myself in growing up, it just brings it back again. You know, Black women and Black people in general are often not associated with the idea of, of, natu- of the natural world of cultivation. Yeah. They're always framed in, in terms of labor. We're never really depicted as luxuriating <laughs> in nature. Mm-hmm. We're always struggling with nature to bring something mm-hmm. out of the ground or to run through it to escape something. Um, I think that, you know, in going out, as you just said, is this reclamation of our role in how Barbados specifically, mm. could, I can talk to the U.S. and Barbados, um, but how Barbados came to be as beautiful as it is. <laughs> it's not, you know, you know, there, there were, there were um, indigenous people there who cultivated mm. that land. And yes. they, then we came and we, we brought something to it. Yes. And all that, you know, leisurely thing of, of drawing botanicals and watercolors, we were part of that too. We were the ones going, picking those flowers and bringing them into the house. So I think that's such a really wonderful point to be made. Um, and, and that idea of reclaiming that field work um, that's not labor, but observational yes. and, and documenting. There's yes. a literacy that comes with that. Even if you don't know how to read words, understanding how the world, how nature functions is its own language and vocabulary and, and stands with language to me, as you said, um, as equally important. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, so I have um, just two other questions, really. Um, and, and maybe uh, in what you just said, you would have answered this question already. Uh, but if you've got something more, um, what is the, the, the big picture in this collaboration? And I, I believe that we have both, you know, um, sort of targeted what we see as the big picture. But is there any other facet um, of this collaboration um, that you would like to point out with respect to this big picture? You know, what, what the, the outcome, you know, we're going to have... Um, a coloring book as a vehicle to reconnect persons to our biodiversity, um, interrogating um, their love for shape and form and color eventually as they make the book their own by adding their own colors. Mm -hmm. Uh, We're having an adult version and a a children's version because it's important um, that we do share this with the younger generation because they're the ones who are going to have to bring the color and the biodiversity to our world. Mm-hmm. So other than what we have both said, is there anything else that you think is part of this outcome in terms of the big picture of the collaboration? Oh, that's a really tough one. Um, you know, the, the thing with it is in our, our relationship to me is very important. Um, so in addition to educating people, it's you. it brought you into my life, if I can be so personal as to personalize the question a little bit. Um, and that to me was significant. It's important. I enjoyed, I know I, don't long, I no longer live in Barbados, but the last uh, about, I think, eight months of my time there was spent with you in field work. A friend of mine, a collaborator of mine, Nugen Smith, loves to, to take these kinds of relationships that we, we, we do where we come together, we make a work of art. He's like, the art is the object, but the, and the documentation is the object. And for me, this book stands, uh, these two pieces of work stand um, as a testament to our connection as well, my human connection to you, my collaboration with you. And that's something that's gonna last forever. Even if we don't speak to each other every day or every week or even every month, I can say I did this thing and here is a living, breathing document of this relationship that I have with Dr. Sonia Peter. And that experience is, although not specifically documented, um, the outcome of that relationship are these two things, this coloring book for adults and coloring book for children. Um, So for me, that's one significant thing. That's a very personal thing, but it's also, I think, important to, it's a record of, of us as well. I, I do share that. Um, I remember when I was introduced to your work, 
And um, I was just blown away because of um, your effort to speak through your art form it is really what touched me. Um, and though I will be honest with you, and I thought that my project may not have challenged you in terms of the direction in which you um, were headed, um, I was extremely pleased when you said, certainly this is something that I want to do um, because it's going to give me an opportunity um, to look at you know, where I can take um, this method that I'm using. Uh, so for me, um, it, it's also a model of how um, science and art can blend. And we've never had an issue um, with blending those components. It, it came so naturally. Um, and I, I think um, that is also um, testimony to the, the project. It, it really is a model for yeah. how scientists and an artist can come together um, through something that is natural, um, through a mutual respect for nature and the beauty that it has. I remember telling you, I can't draw. You don't want me. <laughs> I can abstract things. I don't even know if I can draw a little daisy. Um, mm -hmm. so, I mean, that's another component of it, right? It was a challenge. You said you didn't think it was going to challenge me. It took <laughs> us two years to do this. I think it was challenging. <laughs> um, you know, uh, it did challenge me as an artist as well. Like, you know, I am used to one of the things about abstractions, you don't have to adhere to the rules. A flower can have three stems, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Um, so I think it also disciplined me, right, as an artist to be patient, do that observing, bringing it, you know, it doesn't always have to be wild. It can be contained and still intensely beautiful. Um, so, yeah, that, that's also something I took away. It's really, it's had an impact on how I produce my work. Yeah, but I, I have to tell you that the excitement for me was receiving a new collage. Yes. You know, when I when I received the new collage, um, it gave me su satisfaction, you know, because um, what you're doing for me um, is giving me that reconnection uh, with the quality of expression um, that I have not been able to make a focus of my domain. And so it's like I'm living through you. <laughs> in this project. Uh, so I want to thank you very much for taking me on um, with my ideas. So my last question for you really, are there any two pieces of, of this work of expression um, via collage that you had a stronger connection with than, than others? Any two or any one? Mm -hmm. Well, the passion flower, I spoke about this already in our conversation. I read it because it was the book. That thing, I was like, oh, I really can't draw because this, <laughs> this is an impossible thing. Whoever, you know, I, I looked at other people's versions of passion flowers and there was always a lot of editing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I can't draw this many, like, you know, I forget what you call them, but you know, you know what there are, the, the, the little dangly bits, octopus-like uh, stems that come out of the passion flower itself. And so I challenged myself with that. And I was so pleased. I was so, it, I, you've never <laughs> seen someone so smug. Uh, <laughs> that's when I figured out how to draw that. And I actually collaged it. I took it, I broke it down to its different parts and I put it back together and I Xeroxed that and that became the passion flower. Um, because to take it on its whole, the passion flower is an intensely beautiful piece of nature it is oh. it is it is an incredible thing I, I just oh. like look like how how does this even happen yes um, so that was I love it because it was a labor that was the one that was hardest to do and I feel really proud of the outcome uh, of, of staying with it of being patient with myself and going how can we how can we not just reduce it to the bare minimum how can we present it in its full glory um, in this coloring book um, so that's my favorite and the other was a breakthrough for me was the breadfruit collage mm. uh, one because I love breadfruit to my very heart <laughs> it's one of my favorite things in the world I miss it so much here in Tulsa but um, when I first started this project I think we started with mammy apple and um, oh no I'm sorry we started with dog dumpling yes 
Mm-hmm. And we kind of, you know, that I, I started with that one because it was hard. <laughs> it was like, well, this, I know whatever this hexagonal thing that's going on in the body. That's <laughs> um, so, and it was just like struggling and like just figuring out like, where do I place these components? Because this, I wanted to be literal, but I also still wanted to play with my uh, collage practice and how I bring things together. And it wasn't until the breadfruit collage and the papaya collage. So those two came out of the same kind of work. Um, that I was like, oh, I'm an artist. I can do what I want. <laughs> so <laughs> let me just <laughs> put these things here, put these things here. And when you see the collage, I think you'll understand, you know, the, the beauty of a banana, I'm uh, sorry, a, a, a breadfruit tree is the massive leaves. Yep. <laughs> Excuse yep. me, of a, of a, of a breadfruit tree and then the, the fruit almost seems like dwarf in comparison mm-hmm. and just bringing that to a collage was really inspiring and the same thing for the papaya the papaya fruit I remember our trip to go look at a papaya a farm that had a papaya patch basically and just being in awe of like the layers of nature going on from the mm-hmm. very little stem you know, and it was all happening yeah. at the perfect time because there were papayas on there, but there were also blooming flowers and blooming leaves. And so I think those two really made me go, oh, this is going to be good. <laughs> like, this is going to be <laughs> fun. But, like, I can play with this. And if I may also add one more, sorrow was particularly challenging. I think, you know, I've done some of the collages more than once of so many mm-hmm. different versions, and I think each one is an improvement on the other. The ground fruits were the hardest meaning because they just grow out like a bush yeah. so like the sorrel and the okra they're very almost stiff and again just going taking our st- artistic liberties <laughs> going the wind is going to hit this bush <laughs> and these things are going to whip around each other um and just really having those enlightened moments and being able to kind of get away from the, I must present it as is to, yeah. we can still be true to what this thing is, but give it, you know, um, a little more, dy- you know, mm-hmm. make it more dynamic, more, more like, yeah, just more movement in, in what's happening with them. Yeah. Um, beautifully said. Uh, I don't think many persons know that um, the okra and sorrow are indeed related. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you did um, make a good observation of, of their features. And I do remember um, seeing those coil stems <laughs> in that collage. And I said, well, um, yes, <laughs> a journey here with these, but um, it's something that I love because we don't want to, for me, uh, the best um, artistic product um, always has something that is um, a little extension of nature. Um, it's a little more of what you see immediately uh, mm-hmm. and, and appreciating how this is going to relate over time. Um, so I, I mean, I've said it many times that I'm, um, I've been blown away by the ability of you to take um, an, an idea for a coloring book and indeed make it something extremely special. And um, I'm hoping that persons will also um, appreciate the depth of work that has gone in here. Um, and even if you don't want to color, um, just have a copy of this coloring book um, for history for preservation. Um, as we were talking, uh, my husband, who is a mathematician, um, was telling niggling in my ear um, that nature um, is built around mathematical design. Uh, and I will not argue there. Um, I was listening recently to a documentary talking about um, fractals and how um, this idea of design, we see it in nature, uh, but this particular individual spent some time in Africa and he said um, that this idea of, of having pieces to a design and repeating those pieces in a design um, is linked to the mathematical way of thinking. And it is seen boldly um, in all of African culture. Um, So that just reminded me as he was, you know, 
passing and getting some mathematics in our discussion, um, it really did remind me of what you were doing um, in terms of taking that work and putting it into pieces and then putting those pieces back together in design. Um, so there may be even a bigger picture here <laughs> um, than we are discussing. Uh, but I think overall, um, this project uh, has been amazing for us and we are exceptionally pleased with the product and we're hoping to have um, a launch of the book um, later in the year associated with um, a fair uh, where the nonprofit is going to demonstrate um, all of the work that has been done and um, our coloring book is going to be signature at that fair. So. <laughs> Yeah, I want to thank you um, again. Do you have any closing comments or have we said it all? <laughs> no, I mean, I think you started to say something there about what Mr. Peter said, which mm -hmm. is the mathematics and the patterns. And I thought that was something that I wanted to add just quickly. You said it before I could, which <laughs> is, you know, the thing with this project is that the 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 the, the, the pattern making it, it was pattern making in a way you know it was recognizing the shapes and and repeating them several of the collages have repeated parts and um, um because that's how the, the fruit was replicated on the vine mm -hmm. or, or in the branch or in the leaves so um the, i thought that was a really beautiful comment um but also just it was wonderful to work with you on this i know we had our hiccups in terms of just me leaving barbados and mm -hmm. um then the pandemic mm -hmm. uh, which was a huge obstacle and, and just trying to to stay sane um during all of that and we did it i have never felt so accomplished as when I was able, I think maybe a month ago, a month mm -hmm. ago, or Saturdays ago, was able to say, Dr. Peter, all of the collages are in this Dropbox folder, have yeah. at it. <laughs> um, it. It was such a, a, a proud feeling to, to, mm -hmm. to have done it. Um, because I, I think, and you, I think you might have thought, oh, we not, this is, okay. <laughs> not sure if this is ever going to get done. But I think that it's a reflection, too, of both of our commitment to the project yes. and, and saying, no, this is, no matter what's happening, we will finish this. Yes. What do we want in here? How are we going to do this? Let's stay in communication. I really appreciate that. I appreciate you giving me the grace and the extensions as well, because life has been really a roller coaster ride. Um, but this was a truly proud moment for me in 2021 to say I've finished this project. Just to let you know, just in my in my other life as a tech editor, they're obsessed. My colleagues are obsessed with this book. Like, <laughs> is it done? <laughs> <laughs> Is it come because they've seen the work? We have an art channel in my company uh, where there are lots of artists that work for my company uh, and we share our work with each other. And I've shared some of them. The Passion Flower, uh, Passion Fruit uh, Collage is the favorite. Um, everybody wants to buy a print of that just oh. to let you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's, it's, I'm very proud of it. I'm proud of it. And it's even better than I even could imagine it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm lost um, for superlatives because um, I, I think that beyond the coloring book itself, um, there are other opportunities um, for this work uh, in terms of the contribution it can make. Yeah. Yes, yeah, indeed. I am open to all possibilities, as I said. I'm hopeful that the pandemic doesn't continue. Let me just be more specific. I hope COVID does not continue to mutate to a point where it will be, again begin to devastate us. And, and yes, with our movements, if we can get it under control globally, I would love to come to Barbados and work on such a project again. Yeah, um, I'm very open to that. So yes, fantastic. Well, we look forward um, to the launch of the coloring book. Um, I really do, you know, hope that you could be there. Um, if not, we certainly will make sure you're there virtually, um, you know, with the connections we're able to make. And I also look forward to us elaborating this book, um, the content of the book beyond, um, um, you know, offering it as a vehicle 
uh, for communication, for education, um, and just blending everything that it has to offer. I want to thank you so much um, for sitting and talking with me. It was super great for us to just unpack all of what was linked to the project. I know that um, COVID brought us a big challenge. Um, we had to rethink the extent of what we would do, uh, but I think that what we have been able to produce, considering everything, um, is truly excellent. And um, we look forward to the future. Absolutely. Thank you so much. This was, it was really not a hardship at all. <laughs> Thank you. And you take care.